Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. The main talking points on tonight's programme. It's the late, late show for Scotland against Slovakia. One more push towards a playoff for Russia. Slovenia next up for Scotland. Liverpool ready to honour King Kenny. Yeah, just a few of the talking points. <coughs> Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, and I'm delighted to say on a Friday it has to be a regular book room guest, Hugh McDonald of the Daily Mail. I've never known a happier studio uh, <laughs> than tonight's because it's a win. I don't care how late it is. <laughs> it's a win <laughs> for Scotland, Ruffy. Yeah, yeah, and I wish, uh, obviously, Gordon Strang says he knew we were going to score. <laughs> uh, I wish he had told the, ro the rest of us <laughs> when and when we were going to score because it was getting a bit tight and mm -hmm. uh, but all credit to the players they kept going forward and particularly the last 12 13 minutes we were just throwing everything at it mm -hmm. and uh, you, you, you were just hoping one of them was uh, going to hit the back of the net and fortunately for us that uh, it was the opposition that put it in and not us, but uh, as you say, we'll take it in, take anything that comes. Yeah, and of course the, the entire nation always likes to get up in the morning and see the back page headlines of the newspapers. The uh, Daily Record, uh, I think, summed it up with just uh, one word, joy. Um, the 1-0 win over Slovakia. What about the sun? Similar images that we all like to see. Last minute, boom. Um, and again, just <laughs> referencing what uh, Ruffy was talking about, I knew a goal was coming, says Gordon. And the Daily Mail, well, there you have it, dream on. And uh, all the Scotland players rejoicing, uh, wearing the uh, away strip, which was a surprise mm. on the night. I didn't really mm. care. I don't care what strip Scotland wear as long as they win Hugh McDonald. Absolutely. And I mean, I have no problems at all about this. It was weird everybody was getting really worked up about it. Apparently it was, they had to change it because it was the, 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 the home strip had white in it and, the, yeah. and the, they thought it would it would clash with the Slovaks, but I've got no problem at all. And there's a big critic of Gordon Strachan as well uh, throughout this campaign and indeed the last campaign. Uh, I didn't even think he should be in charge of this campaign. Good on him. Uh, a good result last night, a great result last night. I'm not buying into this lucky at all. Mm -hmm. I think if a game goes for 90 minutes, you're entitled to score in the 89th. Scotland do it regularly. There might just be a reason for that. There was never any point in Scotland uh, team uh, where you felt that the heads were going to go down. I, I thought I wasn't as confident as Gordon striking that we would score, but I was sure there was going to be another chance. I thought it was another chance in yeah. the game. And uh, two of his substitutions, he was criticised for his selection, uh, but two of his substitutions did very well. I thought Chris Martin changed the game. I thought he should be known at half-time, but he changed the game. Scotland then began to hold the ball up, and Anya creates a goal. So, yep. good on Gordon, well done. Yep, um, of course, uh, let's hear from the man himself. Uh, Gordon Strachan, the Scotland manager, saying he did indeed always feel uh, the goal was going to come. At no time did it feel really stressful when I was down there, because I felt party when I was down there, and I could see that they had everything under control. It wasn't a problem for them in the game, apart from a couple of misplaced passes, they got counter But being close to them, I could see they were really in control of the game, and they were, had a real belief in what they were trying to do, and uh, stayed above the anxiety of the crowd, which is obvious. We're all getting, a lot of people are getting anxious to that, but you pay your ticket for it, and that's part of the, the emotions that you, you get when you watch a football match. Because they stayed above it, stayed doing the things they wanted to do. And I generally felt we would score, no matter what the time was. Brilliant confidence. I wish you'd, as you're right, Ravi, you should have told us because it was very nervy sitting next to you um, because uh, you can make um, a sunny day seem dull when I'm watching Scotland. Um, the other point I was going to make on this one, uh, Ruffy, is full marks to the referee because mm -hmm. the Serbian yeah. official was not fooled um, by the dive and had the bottle to go up and give him another yellow card mm -hmm. to send him off. Yeah, I mean, obviously he was a lot closer than us. I, I, I actually, when I saw it, I thought, oh, please don't be a penalty, you know, because from where we were up in the stand, we're that far away, and they're so good at it, these forwards, you know, they, 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 mm. it's, it's becoming a sort of a trademark now, you know, a lot of strikers that they, they leave their foot in, and I think he thought Craig was going to come right through, so he was going to use his mm. boot to hit his knee, uh, but Craig had obviously pulled out of it. And yeah, you're right, you know, and I have to, I have to say that uh, thank heavens because uh, they were a useful side. 
Uh, I don't think we can get away from that. I thought technically they were very, very good, and defensively, I, I thought they were superb. You know, I thought they were they were going to hold out. You know, obviously the goalkeeper had some fantastic saves, but uh, I, I'm glad they went down to ten men because I think they might have gave us a wee bit of problem with eleven. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that to me last night at Hamden. That you know, do you think we would have won with eleven? The game is a different game. The strategy becomes different against you when you're playing eleven. Yeah, I. I, I... That is will remain the matter of hypothesis, as they say. I mean, yeah. who, and frankly, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the fact of the matter is the game is played within a certain parameter of rules. Scotland didn't get lucky getting men. You know, sometimes you can get lucky with sending off. That was two bona fide yellows. I mean, I had to. Uh, I watched on television. We strips you away from the action and, and yeah, the great arms, but you see it, yeah. you and they freeze it, and, and they freeze it, and they freeze it. Both bookings were absolutely bang on. The first booking was a late tackle on the inside of uh, uh, James Forrest's ankle, reckless, and the second one was an absolute definite dive. There's no contact whatsoever. Alan described it brilliantly. So we can talk about if they beat 11 or not. And everybody can have their de definite views. The fact of the matter is we were playing 10 and we're playing 10 for justifiable reasons. The referee was right to send Mike off. Yeah, and uh, here's Gordon Strachan on that point you were talking about, about um, Chris Martin. I had to change after when they got a man sent off. It took us about 10 minutes to readjust to that, understand what was needed at that point. And uh, the longer the game went on, the stronger we got, and we just felt it was time for Chris to come on. Um, we tried playing random round the sides. We were getting a lot of that. But there's times where you need Chris's power there. Because, really, if you look at them, they're a right powerful side. Big people um, with good technique. So that, that can be a problem at times. So we needed Chris on. And I thought it was terrific when he came on. Yeah, he gives us that option, Ruffy, of <laughs> the, the target <clears throat> man, which <throat> at times... <clears throat> you know, we can play and play and play and then, um, you know, we don't have that option of just, you know, throwing it in there, which is, you know, it's still a part of football and a vital part of it rather than people being highly critical. Um, there's a couple of things I want to get your thoughts on as far as the, 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 the performance of individuals. You know, Griffiths, superb. For me personally, I thought Darren Fletcher was immense reason being we've lost two key players one of them is by far the standout footballer in Scotland over the last year in Scott Brown but Fletcher always demanding the ball always trying to push us forward and this is a guy who's getting on in, in his years I thought he was superb yeah I thought early on he was superb I thought he used all his experience you know he was pinging the ball left and right you know and always to one of our players he controlled the game uh, I thought he was super uh, you're right about Martin but I, I thought when Martin came on it meant that Lee Griffiths, who was working tirelessly mm. up there, the big boys at the back had got his mark. Mm. You know, they, yeah. they, they were, as Gordon said, they were big guys. Mm. Lee was running out ideas. But when Martin came on, Griffiths fell back Aye. and he started getting space. He started getting the ball and running at people rather than having his back to the game. And I thought that was yeah. uh, it was a good move by God. And also, in all fairness to uh, the B-boy Tierney, he shouldn't have been there because he's not naturally that side of the mm. park, you know, and he was cutting, he mm. was going in and, and he was mm. doing his job, he was mm. doing what he was told, and, he, but he, and rather than getting there uh -huh. and putting balls in, he was, was cutting, cutting back uh. and everybody was whoa, having to check back when yeah. Kechi Anya come on, he's getting to the byline line because mm. he's a natural sided and he was firing balls mm. in. So, you know, I think, again, as you said, it was great. Substitutions yeah. Griffiths got. build up to the goal as well should not mm -hmm. be underestimated. I don't know if you saw it live, it'd be, it looked like a wee scramble and it, it was lucky to go through. If you watch it on the television again, it was really cute, determined play. Fantastic bit of, bit of work that has kept her dream alive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here's what uh, Gordon Strachan uh, thought uh, that win did for not only his side, but the nation. Everyone makes you feel better about yourself. Everyone, and a performance makes you feel better about yourself so the goalkeeper was outstanding crossbar wasn't too bad either um, so there was a lot going on that we can be pleased with then we have to regroup and go again 
Yeah, magic. Mm. Regroup and go again. I mean, that's mm. that's the one thing I think we have to point out. We had chances. The keeper was magnificent. I mean, the free kick from Griffiths, superb, and Chris Martin's curler. Particularly, I mean, because people could say, well, if the, the, the Lee Griffiths one was going in, the goalkeeper would have saved it because he was that away from it. But the Chris Martin one, the goalkeeper was beat completely and utterly. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the the Slovakian uh, manager Jan Kozak was too happy with it all, Ruffy. Um He was short in the press conference, and I, I think he was unhappy that he thought there was some underhand <laughs> tactics mm -hmm. going on, even with the team's baggage, which was yeah. delayed at Glasgow Airport. I don't know if you have you felt as if your mm -hmm. forum was hampered if you didn't have your bag with you. Yeah, no, not my bag with me. My form was hampered when there's a drill outside your room at mm -hmm. two o'clock in the morning, you know, and they're digging up holes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's happened on numerous occasions. But no, I don't think... I think he's just disappointed. You know, mm -hmm. I think if any of us had been the manager and the way his team defended, you know, and to lose a goal late mm -hmm. on, you're going to be mm -hmm. absolutely... He maybe thought, yeah. he's, maybe thought he's hamper, he's hamper. Yeah. Well, uh, to be fair, hey, hey uh, Hugh's available for after dinner speaking. Um, I have to say, uh, Ruffy and I uh, dressed as baggage handlers. Just we'll return those bags as soon as we possibly can. We're going to hear from the Scotland players next. Yeah, sadly missed Tom Petty. Um, of course, Leeds United in the European Cup final didn't win it. Bayern Munich won in the end. Um, and the Vauxhall Chevette didn't do it for me, Ruffy. I'm sorry. No, but it was the start of an era of uh, sort of a stylish cars. I mean, that yeah. and back in his day would have been I know. A, a really popular car to get. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where, do not know where you're going with that. Okay. Let's crack. Let's crack on. Um, as far as uh, the manager's concerned, well, he always knew the goal was coming. Of course, there were uh, so many players who uh, put themselves um, right up to the plate to try and get the result, uh, and we decided to catch up with them after the game to get all their thoughts on it. So you're going to hear from a collection of players: Christoph Berra, um, Darren Fletcher. Charlie Ali McGrew, Kieran Tierney, and Chris Martin, of course, and Barry Bannon. We weren't in trouble too much, you know, they were just dangerous on the counter-attack because they sat deep and we never really had anyone to pick up, so it's just when the broken numbers, so it's just all about concentration and, you know, maybe being a bit patient with the ball and not rushing things, And because the fans, you know, it's natural, you get a bit uh, anxiety and a bit worried and stuff like that, you know, you just got to kind of block that out and keep on doing it and then we've got rewards. Now, you know, people don't realise playing against 10 men is not easy because people expect you to just be able to run up the park and create chances, it's not... The reason we win the game in the last minute is because we work them side to side and we're patient and we tire their legs. It just, just shows that we never, we never stop believing, we keep pushing to the end. Um, we know we've always got chances in us and we've got players that come on the park. Just Martin come on again tonight, it was brilliant. And mm. um, MacArthur come on brilliant again and, and it's a really a squad game and we know that people that come on can add something to us and we all just keep believing and it shows in the end when we get the result. Obviously I've came off for a catch the kind of more attacking option at right back. Um, he's done great to get the cross in for the goal, so it was, it was a great substitution. We've gained real momentum over the last few months um, with, with the performances and the results that we've had. Um, obviously winning breeds that confidence and I think um, with a few results in a row that we've had and plus the performances on top of that, um, I think that's why you're seeing the confidence in the lads. Um, we're playing a hell of a lot better than what we were towards the start of the campaign and um, hopefully we end up getting the rewards for the hard work that we put in. I think you make your own luck. I think that, you know, unlucky, yes, to a certain extent, but at the same time, you've got to make your own one. You've got to make sure that, you know, you, you keep playing the right way and you, you earn your luck, you know, and you keep putting the ball in opportunities, you keep people being brave. Sometimes you've just got to bide your time. The squad have been playing brilliant, and um, unfortunately for Scott and Stuart, they've both got injuries, so my time came tonight, and like I said, you've got to be ready. You never know when. It's going, to, it's going to come round the corner and luckily tonight I got my chance and I really enjoyed it and like, like I said, it was great to get the victory and that's the main thing. 
Yeah, and I think all those players, especially Barry Bannon at the end, emphasising patience was the key. We, we kept plugging mm -hmm. away, mm -hmm. going left, going right, waiting, showing that uh, measure of composure. Mm -hmm. We'll need to do that against Slovenia. Absolutely, but there's, there's no reason, Peter, for thinking that we <coughs> must do that. I mean, for all the criticism, some of it uh, given by me about the last two qualifying campaigns, yeah. you never, ever criticise... There's never been a criticise the, the criticism that the players went up for or the players went trying or, or the players wouldn't want to go in the full 90 minutes. Statistics show that they were. Again, <coughs> there's no... I don't think there's any luck in scoring in the 89th minute. I've yeah. never done... And I've also think losing in the 89th minute as well, which Scots fans say, oh, we're so unlucky. I mean, the Polish game, we lost in it. And that day with luck. Yeah. I think he's got a... I, 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 we've always thought that players would emerge mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe the stars would align with a, a, a Celtic side playing the Champions mm -hmm. League. I, I, I mentioned to Hugh before we come on here, Ruffy, that quite simply, Gordon Strachan hasn't had two strong Scottish teams there's, there's not been a strong Rangers with players that were pushing as yeah. well. So he hasn't had that option, but he's suddenly got a suddenly got everybody coming together in a kind of a club mm -hmm. squad feel about it. Yeah, and uh, we, we, we saw that in the last uh, year, I would say. And, and I think if there's a lot of people, uh, players out there are honest, there's some players not in that squad because he doesn't want them in it. Mm. Uh, he wants a, a 22 or a 27 mm -hmm. who are all day to day they're, they're living together they go on well together and uh, that's as much uh, and as good as when they're living around the park if they're all pulling in the right direction it's always a good start yeah well what about the fans um, we caught up with uh, David Dixon who's the trustee of the Tartan Army Children's Charity and of course asked him uh, first of all earlier this afternoon what about that result oh that's absolutely fantastic Peter wasn't it brilliant I mean, the whole place was bouncing, then it became nervy, and then, as ever, I mean, maybe we should just actually not come for the first 85 minutes of a game now and wait for the last five. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what it's been like this whole campaign, isn't it? All the games have came 87th minute or after, bar motor, of course, but excellent. What did it's you make of... The yeah, absolutely. I mean, what did you make of the, what did you make of the performance? I thought that they were excellent, yeah. Watching the highlights back, I mean... Their keeper, three brilliant saves. Their goalkeeper, plus we're out of the bar twice. I mean, I thought they were great, yeah. And overall, I mean, I was speaking to a number of uh, the Tartan Army upstairs before the game and they were worried about the team selection because Gordon seems to go for his tried and trusted foot soldiers. What do you make of it? Yeah, yeah, I quite agree. It's, I mean, when Armstrong and Brown were ruled out, a lot of people were saying you know, McGinn or McGregor would play. But I was always fairly confident that they would turn to Morrison and Bannon and Fletcher. And I'm a wee bit surprised MacArthur got dropped with him playing so well the last two qualifiers. But, uh, but no, like you say, Strachan was always likely to go with the guys who have uh, done, done it for him before. Yeah, I mean, we did we did leave it late. It looks as if it was credited as a known goal, but uh, Chris Martin still had to get in there to put him under pressure. Uh, and again, uh, Scotland showed tremendous patience. That seems to be a key point that the manager's trying to get over to the Tartan Army. Yeah, yeah, quite right. Uh, I was a wee bit surprised that Martin never came on sooner. I thought he might have came on at half-time after the car, you know, to give them a, a big body standard up against the two centre-halves for the whole game. But... Not working in. Uh, it's great news for us. It now means that Slovenia is alive and kicking for us. It's in our own hands. What do you make of this game? Uh, I think it's going to be the easiest team talk of Strachan's career. This is, there's no talk involved. It's going to win the game, lads. That's, that's what we need to do. There's no, no two ways about it, really. And I think the players, I'm very confident the players are going to go out and do it for us. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to be there uh, myself. I don't know if you're going. I don't know if any, if you've been allowed to go. Are you heading to Slovenia? Uh, I'm not, unfortunately. I'm giving this one a miss. But <laughs> hopefully we'll have a playoff game next month to look forward to, Peter. Yeah. Do you think overall, though, under Gordon Strachan, we're in fine fettle and heading in the right direction now? Uh, well, he's showed that he can change. If you look at the teams from the start of the campaign to the team now, there's not many faces still on the team. So it's shown that he's willing to adapt and change. So, yeah, I think that we're going in the right direction now. Yeah, OK, I'm going to ask you for the toughest question of all. Give us your prediction for Sunday. 2-1-1 for Scotland. 
Well, David, we don't have anywhere to watch it, so me and Ruffy will be around at your house. If you could get some tea and biscuits, we'll be more than happy to sit in that big couch with you. <laughs> Absolutely, Peter. You're more than welcome. Mm, that's from right. an uneasy silence because we don't really know any of his family, Ruffy. But <laughs> I still, it's free biscuits and tea. We might as well go. Yeah, I mean, I like to think there'd be a bit more on offer, you know, at the end of the game. Yeah, what, what dinner? <laughs> 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 a few drinks? A few drinks to celebrate us yeah. getting to the playoffs. Oh, oh you <laughs> calm, <laughs> calm down your enthusiasm, eh? You, hey, listen, <laughs> let's go back to the boy who said a 3 0 heavy defeat and the manager's got to go. <laughs> you know, where's that Ruffy gone? <laughs> We are, like everybody else, I think uh, we're right behind the team and we want to see, I mean, the celebrations after that uh, game last night were fantastic yeah. and it just shows you how much it means to so many people and I think that's one of the things that Gordon really appreciates that yeah. uh, the supporters going away happy. Yeah, well, uh, listen, we're going to hear from uh, a number of people um, who were launching the show racism, the red card uh, today in Glasgow. I caught up with uh, more than a few ex-players. But uh, uh, first of all, uh, I spoke to a former Rangers and Scotland midfielder Derek Ferguson on the result. How good was that, Peter? I thought, uh, do you know something? I thought it was an absolutely fantastic game to watch. Sometimes you watch international games and... Let's not be around the bush, they're quite boring. That was a terrific game. I thought uh, there was, in terms of the choice of selection, I was a little bit surprised, but uh, there was no failures last night. I thought they were, uh, th I thought they were different class in terms of the way they went about their business. And we got the results, so uh, he's had his critics, Gordon Stratton, but, uh, but at the moment, you know, he's got that, that squad. I was going to see the team, but he's got a squad of players absolutely flying and certainly uh, giving the nation something to smile about. I've got to get your prediction. What do you think, Slovenia away? We've got momentum, we've got confidence, and certainly we'll go into this game with belief. Yep, it's a tough fixture. It's away from home, but uh, but that belief that the guys have in the camp, uh, I think we're going to go and, and do it. Uh, but we've still got a playoff game uh, to play. We'll get there, we'll get that playoff game. Uh, and I think maybe we need to kind of be a wee bit lucky in terms of who we get. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's another point that we've got to make as well. Two games in the playoff if we get past uh, Slovenia. The one positive thing here, just before we go to the break, Hugh, uh, we've dropped two points from the last 15 available and we've had four clean sheets in the last five games. That's crucial. I think central to all this, we can talk about <coughs> everything you want, but Mulgrew and Bear are, are looking a strong partnership in the middle. And that was always the Achilles heel of Scotland. And I think going to Slovenia with that pairing and on the back of clean sheets gives us more than a chance. Yeah, I, I like the fact that, oh, of course, Charlie Mulgrew can play the ball out mm. as well. He can yeah. hit a pass, Ruffy. Yeah, and that'll be the kind of game it'll be. I think Gordon will try and get as much possession as possible and uh, obviously try and take something out of the game. OK, coming up after the break, uh, we're going to look towards Slovenia. We'll get a prediction out of these guys and then we'll look to other events in football over the last couple of days. Well, out on that one, Hugh, I just did not get that at all. No, that, that, what, that's one that he's almost starting to argue. It's 69 for Gravesy. Yeah. Is that, no, is it? I don't know why he got picked for the World Cup squad. For yeah. 70. Yeah. And then uh, he never got playing. You know what? He had an amazing record. Do you know one of the things that he, he could brag about for his first five clubs? He scored on his debut well, I remember, for his yeah. first five clubs. But he was a sensational striker. Don't, doesn't surprise me. He was extraordinarily good. I mean, he wasn't even just like a, pooch, a poacher. He could dribble is and he could pass the ball in the net. Is that, a, is that a record? Kind what? of record? Well, it's sugar by the no, arches. That's no. a record, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, scoring, scoring the... I mean, I let in goals in the first five teams I played for that. Yeah. That's, a, that's a record. You could that as a record. That's, that's, <laughs> could that, yeah. could that is typical. That's what you yeah. could that is. Yeah, part of the course <laughs> is what you say for that one, Ruffy, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, of course, uh, now uh, we are concentrating on one big push, one game, Sunday, Slovenia against Scotland. Nice. 
it's a, not an easy game to go to Slovenia, but it's in our hands. That's all you can ask for. You know, a big part of the job was to get the win tonight. You know, it was a, we needed two wins from two games. We're at halftime now. We've done the first part. We've got to pick ourselves up and go again. Saying favourites, it doesn't really matter because we've got we know what we've got to do. We've got to go to Slovenia and win, which won't be easy. It's, it's massive. I mean. Uh... But we'll play the game, we'll not play the occasion, we'll not think, uh, think too much about uh, what it means to us. We'll just um, try and play the game as it, as it unfolds and hopefully we can do the, do the business. Slovenia are no marks, they'll be a very difficult opponent and they've got good players as well, so we're going to have to be right on it. That just gets you excited, doesn't it? Um, I mean, because of the way we played away in Lithuania, I'm I'm confident, without that overconfidence, <coughs> that maybe a goal could settle it in our favour. I think I think I think it's I think it's, I think it's um, maybe a one-goal game. I mean, we're talking there about um, Slovenia's defensive record; they're very strong defensively. You talk about excitement. I'm really excited because I honestly didn't expect to be in this position, and not from a long time ago. From the Lithuania, the draw against Lithuania at home, I've been pretty convinced that it was all over. So this is like having a second shot, almost like a chance at nothing now, you know. So I'm really up for this, you know. Yeah. And I think now it's tipped in favour of Scotland. Yeah, well, I, the only, I want to read you out the team from Scotland against Lithuania, um, where we, uh, you know, we'll probably look back, if it doesn't go according to plan, mm -hmm. we will probably look back That's at that right. one back in, one. Uh, a year ago. But here's the team from a year ago, Ruffy, um, against uh, Lithuania. It was uh, Marshall in goal, Callum Patterson at right back, um, Andrew Robertson, Russell Martin, Grant Hanley, Barry Bannon, Darren Fletcher, Oliver Burke, Chris Martin, Robert Snodgrass, and Matt Ritchie. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. That's you know now <clears throat> I think you could you could pick easily what eight out of his eleven it's a it's a uh, it's a yeah. regular eight and it wouldn't be that eight <laughs> and, 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 and you know and be very few of that on yeah. it. I mean Andrew Robertson would want, I mean even Dan Fletcher's not his starting player now and he's in there Barry Bannon wouldn't be a starter either I mean I think Fletcher and Bannon will be starters on Sunday but only through through uh, injury. Um, There's seven players on the substitutes mm -hmm. bench alone, mm -hmm. Hugh, um, that all have emerged or pushed themselves into the yep. main team. The, chain, the team has the team has evolved. It's evolved through good luck. It's evolved through some management as well, uh, and it's now a much much stronger team than that one. I think there's still slight tunings to be done uh, for Sunday. I would personally like a, a more proactive midfielder. I think we're smashing in midfield and, you know, you know, pressing uh, the ball and retaining possession. But I think we like, we really lack an incisive pass. And if you've got somebody like Griffiths, who's not going to, you know, win cross balls in the air, you know, that's not what he's there for. He just wants somebody to play him in down the lines, and I don't know if we've got that player in the team. W what would you change about the team, Ruffy, from the starting eleven that he picked? Mm -hmm. uh, are there any that you would look to change? I would probably change uh, Cairn Tierney, not because he, he's, he didn't play well, just because it's not it's not his natural position. You know, you can see him with Celtic on the left hand side. <coughs> he is the player in the opposition's 18-yard box. Last night, he was never anywhere near the 18-yard box and everything was coming down the other side. Now, that's not his fault because yeah. he's asked me to, to do a job, but uh, I, I would play a natural right-sided player that's going to get the byline and put balls in for that side, Robertson on the other side. I thought that the balls that we were getting, we weren't doing it in the first half. We weren't getting into the dangerous wide positions and firing balls along the ground. But as the game was going on, Robertson was getting more more chances of getting in and firing everything hard and low and we saw what happened I mean these big if you're going to start firing big to these big guys they're just going to mop it up mm. but you fire something in and you've got somebody coming in the end the defenders forwards we saw what happened Skittle puts it in the back of the net and that's a kind of if we can't get through the middle we've got to go down the sides yeah, so you would put Anya in? Yeah, I would put Anya in, yeah. in, in a more forward position because, I mean, I don't think this team's as good as the Slovakians. But they, and they don't come and hurt you. They don't mm. come and... They'll, they'll play like they did at Hampton as if they were playing 
at home, they play the same away from home. You know, they just get possession, they keep a hold, they, they wait until they get a chance. Although they don't lose many goals, they don't also score many goals either. So we're not going to get bombarded. Uh, mm. So I think it's all about players on the park who are comfortable in possession and got Gordon's got them all into that mould. I don't panic. You know, me, we might all be panicking. You know, as the game's going on and we're not scoring, but on the park, the players seem to be relaxed about. Let's let's not rush this. Let's just keep possession, wait until the chances come, and when the chances come, we'll take them. And uh, hopefully, that's what will happen <coughs> Sunday. Yeah, I think there'll be few, or you know, if any changes on Sunday. Gordon Sackett, for right or wrong, as a manager, doesn't change much. You know, he needs really convincing before he changes anything. If you were asking me. To, to, to what I would do and I'll, de I'll say this will definitely not happen I would play McGregor and the reason I would play McGregor is McGregor is a, is a, is a midfielder that can thread a pass in the final third we need to score a goal we have to score a goal uh, 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 on Sunday and McGregor's the type of guy that can, that can even score a goal but thread a pass there's also a case <coughs> as well as well for playing Tierney at left back and playing Robertson as your, as your left hand of three. Is that good, Robertson, going forward? Yeah. And playing Anya on the other side. But as again, I'm talking about this, but I know it won't happen. Gordon will stick to tried and tested. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, he's got us into a fighting position. Exactly. So, you know, by every decision, if it comes out, then, you know, we're backing him. Um, uh, we were there at the Slovenia game. Um, this is the starting lineup from the Slovenia game uh, we were at in March, uh, Ruffy, which again was mm. starting to take shape, albeit again, sounds familiar, mm. it was a late Chris Martin mm. goal. Um, Gordon Tierney Robertson, Martin Mulgrew, Armstrong, Morrison, Brown, Griffiths, Snodgrass and Forrest. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. suddenly you can start to see, you know, other than enforced changes, you mm -hmm. can start to see it emerging. And that's when things, with that late win mm -hmm. over Slovenia at home, mm -hmm. we started to... Yeah, well, what he's tried to do, and he's not, he's, he's held his hands up and said, look, I'm going to try and get us to play like mm -hmm. team football, club yeah. football. You know, let's forget the international stuff. If I've got a lot of players in the team, they're all playing together, mm -hmm. they all know the, the, the strengths and the weaknesses, and I'll surround them by players with experience and that's what he's done and he's stuck by that so what you've done is if you look at a lot of successful teams whether it's Celtic, Rangers, whoever when they go on a run it's 9 or 10 Mm -hmm. of the same players that are playing week in, week out, mm -hmm. and, and that's where Gordon's getting the benefit of it. I, I wonder if there was a, a discussion between Robertson and Tierney as to say who would actually take one for the team mm -hmm. and play right back. You know, because Robertson's the more experienced mm -hmm. of the two, Tierney equally, so both of them put in great balls when they're mm -hmm. at left back and they're, you know, mm -hmm. they're really good on the left side, but I, I just thought Kieran, that's the first time mm -hmm. I've seen him and, and it wasn't the Kieran Tierney that I know, you know, because mm -hmm. he, he was looking, he, he's looking for the pass, and then all of a sudden he's going back the way and going mm -hmm. infield and making the passes mm -hmm. back the way. That's not the, that was so not the Kieran Tierney I know. The other thing as well is he lost possession twice in his own half. I've literally, I mean, he's, he's obviously done that before. I've never seen him do that before. Uh, at least it's not imprinted in yeah. my consciousness that he's done that before. I don't think there'd be any conversation. I mean, Gordon Strachan would just have said, you know what, I've got to maybe take them both into the room and said, listen, you're playing right, left back, you're playing right back, you get any problems with that? Yeah. And those two guys, you know, I've been around those, I wouldn't pretend to know them, but they would take that absolutely. Prediction? one nothing Scotland. I'm going to go 1-0 Scotland, Ruffy. What are you going to go? I'm going 1-0 Scotland, the uh, 91st minute. What? Chris Martin. I don't care who it is. Yeah. <laughs> 91st minute? Yeah, I don't going, think my nerves could take that to you. <laughs> could you take 91st minute? Well, just have to, I suppose. I mean, it's, uh, it is <laughs> going to be is going to be one of those <laughs> games, isn't it? Why don't we just get Gordon a phone and he'll tell us when it's oh, going to be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, roughly, <laughs> we, we might just do that. Um, I mean, <laughs> then we can get some money on it because um, we're allowed to bet uh, in moderation. Um, fingers crossed with that. OK, we're going to look to other football news after the break. Join us if you can.
You're one of my favourite. Oh, I'm on fire tonight I'm because that's fire. one of my favourite FA Cup finals of all time, mm -hmm. Ruffy. Just when you thought Manchester United uh, looked odds on to win it at 2-2, mm -hmm. um, up pops Alan Sunderland from a wonderful pass to, to score in the last minute to win it. Yep, yeah, you're right. And I think uh, the big boy, the big goalie, obviously. Bailey. Gary Bailey. Gary Bailey and yeah. sort of a... The size of him as well, mm. I was wondering why. Well, obviously, he must have got caught out, right? but uh, it was right on his head. Yeah. Bang. Bang. Back of the net. Um, listen, uh, just before we move on to some of the stuff that's been happening today, um, England. Mm -hmm. It would be remiss of me not to talk about England. They got a late, late goal through Harry Kane, and they've qualified. They're looking forward to Russia. Yeah, and um, uh, under absolute torrent of criticism, <laughs> I mean, everybody's been slaughtered. It, it must be great, you know, to be part of a nation who qualify all the time, but you get slaughtered for qualifying, you know. Um, and remember, England, England have not come from a culture of when they, they, they did qualify all the time. It was us that were qualifying and England were messing up. So the qualification campaign has been almost as good as the last one. I still think they've got problems when it comes to big world games because they don't quite have the calibre of player that other teams can call upon. Although, I think Kane and Ali, if they develop, could give them a real good shout in the World Cup. Not to win it, yeah. but to, to maybe get beyond the sort of last 16 stage. Yeah, I don't. I and, and again, you know that sometimes we, you, we can be accused. Sometimes of being hypercritical of England. I always try and keep that level of objectivity about it. Harry Kane is a wonderful player, Golden Boot winner for the last two seasons. Talk of him getting a big, big move. Which uh, again, from his point of view, he says he's happy at Tottenham for the moment, Ruffy. I don't think he's quite world class yet. He's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard some people on radio stations talking a lot of nonsense that he's worth two hundred and fifty million pounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, you, you need to keep your feet yeah. on the ground about this. This no, is a lot of nonsense. No, I would agree with you. I, I think uh, people like Kane, uh, they have to do it at a World Cup. You know, they have to really stand out and uh, be the team leader, which he is now in the qualifiers. But if he was to go to a big competition and start scoring the goals that he's scoring, you know, then the estimations will go up. And as we know, that's when he'll, he'll get the move. But not at that price, I don't think. But uh, Well, the trouble with the prices is it's <coughs> English market and it's going to take a lot to move them yeah. uh, because, you know, Spurs and all the English clubs don't need to sell. It's going to take a big, you know, bid to, to get rid of them. I don't think the, the price does never bother me. What it, the quality of it? I, I think he's come on so much in the last year. I could actually see him playing for Real Madrid now. Yeah, well, we discussed it over the last <laughs> couple of weeks. We mentioned <laughs> he's a. For me, he's a. For me, I think he's a. A typical Bayern Munich player. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I could see him playing. You know, Benzema was getting on a bit. He's yeah. Not getting, but I could see him playing the number nine role for Real Madrid, and that is top class. I agree with you. I mean, there were some people saying that he's now. You know. Ballon d'Or, Ronaldo and Messi, sorry, you know, I mean, I, I've got great, great praise for him. I think he's a classic English number nine, yeah. you know, can score but from any levels, can score from mm -hmm. left foot, right foot, head, clever player, faster than people think. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, I've got great admiration, but if you're talking about Ronaldo and Messi, you're talking about two of the greatest players I've ever played the game, so... yeah. Temper it down a bit. Yeah. Um, well, let's not forget that the two hundred million pound man is Neymar at the moment. Is he yeah. worth more than him? No. Um, okay. Um, we're going to talk about something that's a positive message that we continually uh, try and highlight as often as possible. Um, it's a two-week campaign starting with uh, show racism, the red card. Now in Scotland, there are uh, you know a whole team of people who work for um, a small organisation, show racism, the red card. It doesn't have millions and millions of pounds to call on to to spread the message, but it's certainly a huge message and a worthy message um, that they try to spread. Gary McSwiggan does a great job, Derek Ferguson superb uh, and Mickey Weir as well and uh, I caught up with a couple of the lads today to talk about the launch and the sustained message over the next couple of weeks. It's a big two weeks for the, the campaign, obviously with the game today and a lot of people supporting that. It's massive for us Peter and, that, and we, we appreciate everything that the people do to try and make sure that and let people are aware of the campaign you know because as you know it's just a small campaign but the people who really work hard for us to make sure they get the message out there, they know that racism isn't going to be accepted in this country. It's something that we do work hard at uh, in the schools throughout the year. 
Uh, but over the fortnight of action, you know, it's great that we've got all the football players uh, throughout Scottish football that are going to support our campaign. Uh, we're wearing the T-shirts, I think there's an announcement before the game. And I'm basically purely about getting the message across about having respect for one another. So uh, it's a message that we try to get through in our workshops. And we think we're getting there. Yeah, it's a slow burner, but uh, we've got to change the mindset. Uh, of, of these kids. Sometimes we've found it quite hard with adults, but if we can get to the kids at a certain age, we certainly think it's going to make a difference. Yeah, and I, I mentioned to Derek, I think kids can make the difference to their parents and their grandparents as well. It's a generational thing where slowly but surely people can change their attitudes mm. across all fronts, bigotry, uh, racism mm. as well, uh, homophobia. Exactly, and the things that were acceptable uh, in the general populace when I was young, are no longer, and correctly so, um, not acceptable. And and it's an individual thing. You've got to, you've got to change your own heart, your own language, the way you speak about things. Very, it, it's very nuanced, and we can always learn from from. I mean, I learned a lot of stuff from my kids because there was there was there was stuff that we used to say as it was one of the mill. You know, that's what we would refer to certain shops or certain types of meals as that are wrong and, and it's got to be pointed out and it's great that the kids are getting educated and we can always we, you, always be educated about being more tolerant to our cultures. Yeah, absolutely and, and good to know that the players will do it. I have mentioned, Robbie, <clears> that, you know, it, it's like Wimbledon, it's no use taking the tennis racket out for two mm -hmm. weeks in, in, in the summer. This show racism, the red card, is, is a continual message. Yeah, and you're right in saying it's the, it's the youngsters we should be actually focusing on because there's more and more cultures playing football now at, at that kid's age. So obviously they're integrating with each other. So they, they're the ones that should be, you know, emphasising it uh, in a modern day. This is how you should behave. Uh, two or three people I want to talk about now, switching uh, again back to um, appointments, managerial appointments. Paul Hartley, new Falkirk boss. I think a good appointment for Falkirk, if you, I mean, all went a bit Pete Tong at Dundee, we know that. But if you look at his record before that, it's, it's, it's really good. Particularly, you know, what he did with Aloha, bringing him up, then he brought Dundee up as well. I think it's a good appointment. I think he, I think it's a good, strong club with a good ethos of bringing young players through. Yep, I think that's um, that should be a success. Yeah, sometimes, you know, we always talk about giving managers the time. Sometimes uh, there are forces that work against you. I still think he's a good manager with a lot of good potential, mm -hmm. Ruffy. Yeah, that's why he's got the job. You know, he's went to an interview and uh, he's fitted the slot mm -hmm. that they were looking for. I think Falkirk are a very well organised club. Uh, I think behind the scenes we, we know that the they're big on their academy and, and bringing players through and then the players know when they get through if they're good enough they'll be sold on and the club will just keep ticking mm. away and I think Paul falls into that category of, of embracing that. Yeah, I, I want to mention a player that's uh, having a testimonial tonight, <coughs> the match well underway now um, but Dave Mackay, cup tie Mackay for St Johnson mm. against Dundee um, mm. Ruffy and I know him better as 8 out of 10 mm. uh, because every time we watched him play he was 8 out of 10 mm -hmm. If people ever talk about testimonials and if there's a place in the game for them anymore and they argue about it just stop arguing and put that picture back up of Dave Mackay and you've won the argument. Um, he's the whole reason why testimonials are still required in the game. Uh, absolute legend with St Johnston. And by the way, very interestingly as well, has proven to be more than a decent manager with Sterling Albion. Not much money down there. Uh, he went into a club that faced going into, uh, you know, going out of the top league yeah. and he's got them handily leading uh, that division at the moment. So one, a guy to look out for uh, in managerial front as well. Yeah, and uh, just at one point to finish and got to finish on one of my favourite players of all time, my boyhood idol, uh, Ruffy. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 sorry? no, close, no, no. close. <laughs> um, uh, Douglish, Kenny Douglish. Um, Liverpool will officially unveil the newly named Kenny Douglish stand uh, against Manchester United on October 14th. Um, this is fantastic. There'll be a special programme on the day uh, for the game and uh, uh, there'll be a big mosaic across the Kenny Douglish stand. Mm. That'll be unbelievable. I wish I could be there. Mm. I'm working or I would be there. It's magic. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic tribute, but I, I, don't, I think this is more than just Kenny Douglas, the footballer. I think this is Kenny Douglas, the person, 
about Hillsborough and, and mm. everything that happened and the way he supported it and everything all tied into the one thing and he deserves every bit of it. Yeah, absolutely. And just in case you think uh, that that is uh, not as big a compliment as uh, you should have been paying to him, he was some footballer, Ruffy. <laughs> I mean, that's a great compliment you're paying Yeah, him. the privilege to play with him. And even in training, he was a winner. You know, you can see winners. I mean, we all like to be winners, but you can see somebody who gets a joy out of scoring goals, and he certainly was that man. And if you've got the argument of the greatest Scottish player ever, which is a brilliant argument we could take all night, he's in the frame. Yeah, absolutely. If... Uh, if Harry Kane is worth £250 million, <laughs> pounds, let me tell you, £500 million. Kenny, an absolute legend, fantastic. Go on YouTube him. If you're bored, don't bother watching any other programme. Just YouTube Kenny please. <laughs> Just for a wee half hour. Magnificent. In a red shirt for Liverpool, sensational. And, of course, for Celtic as well. And Scotland. Ah, Sunday. Come on, Scotland. one nothing. We don't care who scores. From Ruffy, Hugh and myself. Good night.